So um, yeah, welcome to your practices webinar series on advanced packaging. I'm Ramzi Salim and um, I'm the Europractice lead at Tyndall National Institute, where we focus on system integration and advanced photonics packaging. This webinar continues in our series where we step into the world of advanced photonics packaging. In the first couple of episodes, we introduced the topic of advanced uh, packaging and then looked at some of the packaging design rules, the do's, the don'ts, uh, the common pitfalls. Um, and in the next few episodes, we're gonna look at fiber to chip coupling, the various techniques involved. And in today's episode, we'll look particularly at edge coupling. But before we jump into it, let's get familiar with the Zoom platform um, that we're using today, if you're not already familiar with it. And so there's a Q&A button. If you have questions, just click on the Q&A button and add your questions in there, and we'll collate the questions and answer them in a Q&A session after the talk. But without any further delay, uh, let me introduce you to my co-hosts and panelists. We've got Dr. Francisco Flores, head of the training programs, and Dr. Daniel Carey, in charge of the development of the laser welding at Tyndall. Over to you, Francisco. Thanks, uh, thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. So today we start talking about uh, how we can couple the light uh, in and out uh, from our peak. Uh, and uh, there are mainly two ways. Uh, the first one is the edge coupling, while the second one is the grating coupling. Today we will focus on edge coupling. In the next few episodes we will talk deeply about grating coupling. So edge coupling, the main question is about the mode mismatch. That is uh, actually the main issue that we have to face to obtain a good coupling using the edge coupling. Then I will show you the main features and uh, some standard packages. The most important one is called butterfly package. Then I will introduce you to some mechanical design and then I will show you the shape of a final design for a device that is ready to be used. And uh, just an hint, uh, two alternative ways to match the modes. One is to use an additional fiber before facing the peak and then what is called adiabatic tapering. But actually let's say mod that okay it's important but let's say the the fiber for us is a source. So it's mainly better to explain a little bit better and in detail the different types of fibers that we can use. Yeah, so um, uh, in the last session, uh, we mentioned fiber and Francisco, you kind of uh, looked over it and introduced the fibers. And I'll just kind of refresh people's memory here with it, especially that we're looking at fiber uh, to chip coupling. Um, so the most common fiber is single mode fiber. It's the backbone of the fiber optics network. It has a tight core allowing for about eight to 10 micron uh, mode field diameter. And it's surrounded by a 125 micron diameter of cladding, different, slightly different index. And then there's a coating layer. Light propagates along the fiber in a single mode. It uses total internal reflection making it very useful for a wide range of applications. And it can go for a very long reach. It's used in applications where there's long reach. And it's, the, like I said, the most popular uh, fiber. Other types of fiber that are quite popular too include multi-mode fiber. Uh, so multi-mode fiber has a wider core and that allows for multiple modes to propagate in the fiber using refraction. It has a higher bandwidth and it's popular in short reach applications, like in data centers. Another popular fiber is the polarization maintaining fiber. It's a specific type of single mode fiber and it has stressed core rods um, running through it that create a fast axis and a slow axis. The polarization maintaining fiber from its name it maintains the polarization injected into it from the source. So they don't swap from fast axis to slow axis or vice versa. Each, um, each polarization sticks to its axis. But that raises a question for me. Uh, Francesco, so if I'm using a single mode fiber, how do I couple light 
to a silicon on insulator chip? Yeah, okay, that's a great question, absolutely. And uh, it's a great question mainly because, uh, let's say, uh, the main features that we have to overcome is the so-called mod mismatch. This arises from the fact that, as you explain, uh, the core of the fiber has a diameter of the order of 10 microns. So the mod field diameter, that is the dimension, the transversal dimension of the mod running inside the core is of the order of 10 microns. Our webguides are instead characterized by dimensions that are SOI thickness 220 nanometers, while the width is just from 450 to 500 nanometers. So the main problem is we have to reduce the mod field diameter of, uh, let's say, two order of magnitudes. And uh, the second problem is uh, if I have a standard fiber, single mod fiber, I have no control on the polarization of the electromagnetic states that is running inside its core. So I can imagine that I have a polarization state that is has in this red arrow aligned in a certain way, but unfortunately is not aligned with respect to the waveguide polarization that is usually TE. So the main problem is uh, A, I have to reduce or adapt the mode field diameter. B, I have to match the polarization state of the waveguide with the core of the fiber. If I am using a standard SOI, for example, I have the problem that uh, my edge coupling is polarization insensitive. So in this case, I have, for example, to use an external device that uh, must be able to select the specific polarization state that I need. Or I can use a PM fiber. In that case, the cost is higher. It depends specifically on the application. Let's say that, to be clear, for SOI, we do not have a way to fix the polarization state. The only thing that we can do is, uh, we can take, for example, the mod field diameter that in the core of the fiber is 10 micron. We can, uh, let's say, taper the edge, uh, the tip of the fiber in order to reduce uh, the lateral dimension. And this is acting as a lens. In this way, I can reduce uh, the diameter of my beam in the region between the tip of the fiber and the SOI, region that is called hot spot to three microns. I have reduced from 10 to three. Then I can use the so-called spot size converter. The spot size converter, usually made of polymer, is just a system with a transverse dimension of the order of three micron to me micron in order to match the lateral dimensions of the hot spot. I can collect the light with the spot size converter, then using again a tapered shape for the SOI waveguide, I can inject the mode inside the waveguide. And in the end, I have the mode inside the waveguide. But pay attention because since the aspect ratio is 220 high for 50, the width, for sure, the polarization state of the waveguide will be always TE, which means that the electric field is oscillating horizontally. Let's take an example. In this case, uh, I want to talk about uh, how to use edge coupling to collect the light ejected by a laser cavity. What we do is uh, we put in place the laser, we connect the laser and we switch on the laser. So we have the light coming out from the cavity. At this point, you see, we just put in front of the laser cavity our properly tapered waveguide. So this shape again is also acting as a lens. So we can collect the light and focus the light inside the center of the core of the fiber. In this way, we are enhancing the injection of the light inside the core. <coughs> we are, in this way, optimizing the coupling efficiency. Consider that usually, in this case, we have low insertion losses. We are talking about the 1 dB around 80% of transmission. The main problem is that uh, 
we have tight sensitivities. So it's really hard. And maybe in this, uh, if you have question, you can also ask uh, uh, Daniel because it's the expert in this field. It's really difficult. It's really hard work <laughs> to finally align the fiber in front of the laser. Usually tolerances are or the order of from, let's say one to three microns, really tight tolerances. But it's interesting because in this case, uh, again, we are talking about packaging. So we have to be sure that we are dealing with standards and standard means that we are sure that we can manage the packages, we can manage the external boxes and we can work inside the boxes in order to put in place all our devices. As I already told you during the previous webinar, the standard in this case is the so-called butterfly package. Why it's so important? Because we can use our claims in order to grab the fiber or all the other devices and put them properly in place inside the external box. So we are sure that the final result will be the best that you can obtain resorting to this technique. This is an example of a final device. So I show you, let's say, the region of space that is uh, highlighted by these two arrows here in red. In this case, uh, the system is obviously a little bit more complicated. Let's say we have a ceramic interposer, we have discrete electronics, we have an electronic integrated circuit that we use to manipulate the signals that are coming from our peak, or we use the electronic integrated circuit to control our peaks. And then what we have is uh, here the edge coupling. You can see the head of the fiber. And in this case, you can see then a standard single mode optical fiber. What is important again is consider the dimensions. We are switching from something that is 200 micron by 200 micron by 100 microns to something that is of the order of centimeters, three centimeters cubes, which means that we are talking about things that are order of magnitudes difference, geometrically speaking, but in any case are things that remain really, really small. So it's fundamental to pay attention when you're working on the alignment. What we can do different with respect to what we are showing you? Well, let's say there are techniques that we are also taking into account uh, to be implemented inside uh, our standards in, uh, in Euro practice. And one of these alternatives is to use an additional fiber. So instead of using just a single mode fiber with a mode field diameter of 10 microns, here in this case, an SMF28, we can use uh, a UHNA7 that is another fiber with a core that is of the order in the diameter of 3.2 microns. In this way, we can immediately on the other side match the mode of the spot size converter. It's easier and uh, let's say depending on the specific application can be better than facing directly the SMF in front of the spot size converter. Another interesting uh, application is the so-called adiabatic tapering. This is a option technique that is uh, really well established in electronic. So we are just creating an optical interposer. So what we are doing is just a system that we interpose between the fiber on the right. So this side of the interposer is matching the mode of the fiber, 10 microns. On the other side, we have uh, reduced the dimension of the mode and we have uh, the so-called peak matching. So the mode field diameter on the left side of this adiabatic tapering is reduced to three microns. Instead of using the UHNA7, we are using the adiabatic tapering. Another option. So Ramsey, I hope it was uh, quite clear. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very interesting, Francesco. I've, I've got a few questions myself, actually. But before we jump into the Q&A session, uh, let me just tell you all a, a bit about what's coming up uh, in this webinar series. Um, so it's a series with multiple episodes, and uh, we're just getting warmed up. 
uh, with these last sessions. Uh, Tyndall is a global leader in advanced photonics packaging and has great, uh, greatly kind of contributed to the field, especially in grating couplers. Um, so uh, in their design, their various types, how to optimize them, um, when to use each type. Uh, and in the next uh, four episodes, we'll be focusing on grating couplers uh, and looking at them in detail. Um, and this is just kind of the introduction into that. Um, so um, the next episode, before I'm going to jump into questions, is in two weeks' time, uh, 5th of May, and we'll be looking at fiber-to-chip coupling using grating couplers. Um, 